Mat Tutorial presents Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease COPD. The outline of the lectures are Introduction to COPD, its types, pathology, risk factors, clinical features, diagnosis, management, complication, and a comparison between asthma and COPD. Definition COPD is a common preventable and treatable disease that is characterized by persistent airflow limitation and is usually progressive in nature. COPD is an inflammatory response in the airways and the lungs to noxious particles such as the nicotine in tobacco smoking. COPD includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Chronic bronchitis is a chronic productive cough for at least three months in each of two consecutive years in a patient in whom other causes of chronic cough have been excluded. So it is a diagnosis of a clinging. Emphysema is a abnormal and permanent enlargement of air spaces distal to terminal bronchioles without obvious fibrosis. So emphysema is an permanent enlargement of SNS. Pathology COPD includes chronic inflammation, increased number of corpulent cell, mucus cell hyperplasia or mucal tans hyperplasia which leads to chronic bronchitis, fibrosis, rising and reduction in number of airways and airway collapse due to alveolar wall destruction. Here is the comparison between normal bronchi and a bronchitis. So bronchitis depicts a large amount of spoolant or coolant sputum which is mainly formed by hyperplasia of mucus glands and goblet cells. Emphysema affects the structure distal to the terminal bronchioles, which are known as SNS. The SNS includes respiratory bronchiole, alveolar duct, alveolar sacs, and alveoli. So they are basically four components of SNS, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, and alveoli. Subtypes of emphysema. Emphysema is classified as proximal SNR emphysema, which is also known as centrilobular emphysema. It is the abnormal dilatation or destruction of respiratory bronchiole, which is the proximal part of SNS, as it is depicted in the picture. Whereas alveolar duct and alveoli are usually spared in centrilobular emphysema and it is related to secret smoking. It can be remembered by the mnemonic C, C for centrilobular emphysema and C for secret smoking. The next type is pan SNR emphysema, pan mean hole and SNR mean SNS. So it refers to the enlargement or destruction of all parts of SNS including respiratory bronchioles, alveolar sacs, alveolar ducts, and alveoli. It is commonly present in patients with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. The last type is distal SNR emphysema, also known as paraseptal emphysema. As the distal SNR's part, that is alveolar duct and alveoli, are present just next to septum, whereas respiratory bronchioles are usually spared. So risk factors for COPD, it includes genetic and environmental. Environmental include secret smoking, occupational dust and chemicals, environmental tobacco smoke, indoor and outdoor air pollution. It also involves poor social economic status and it's more common in aging population. Genetics. In 
smokers tobacco smoking causes inflammatory response leading to the activation of proteases such as elastases that causes destruction of lung acidi however this destruction is prevented by alpha 1 antitrypsin activity which has anti proteases action protecting the lungs however in patients that lack alpha 1 antitrypsin or suffering with alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency the emphysema more commonly pan acidic emphysema occurs the symptoms include dyspnea which is progressive persistent and characteristically worse with exercise chronic cough which is more oftenly productive but may be unproductive and chronic sputum production may be present also include wheezing chest tightness weight loss due to excessive accessory respiratory muscles activity and respiratory infections here is modified mrcp dyspnea scale which to equate the disease into 5 to bn grade 1 which is when patient is not troubled by breathlessness except on strenuous exercise the disease is classified as grade 1 whereas in grade 2 sob is present while hurrying on a level or walking up a hill in grade 3 patient walks slower slower than most people on the level or when it stops after a mile or after 15 minutes of walking in grade 4 shortness of breath is present walking about 100 yards or after a few minutes on level ground whereas in grade 5 the patient is too breathless to leave the house or breathless when undressing the physical signs on inspection it include barrel shaped chest accessory respiratory muscle participation leading to weight loss for long expiration during quiet breathing acceleration expiration through first sleeps as poor signs and tripod position is present which will be discussed later on whereas barrel shaped chest is shown in which anthropostural diameter is increased tripod position in advanced COPD patients adopt a tripod position that relieve their dyspnea the position include leaning forward with arms outstretched and weight spotted on the palms or elbows as it is depicted in diagram clinical manifestations palpation on palpation decrease parameters for calis are present percussion represents hyperresonant trunk depressed diaphragm or diminution of area of absolute cardiac dullness on auscultation prolonged expiration reduce breath sounds presence of wheezing during quiet breathing and crackle can be heard if infection exists diagnosis of CPD it depends on the symptoms and to the risk factors symptoms include SOB or shortness of breath chronic cough sputum and exposure to the risk factors such as tobacco smoking occupations outdoor indoor pollutions but the type diagnosis is made by spirometry spirometry the diagnosis depends on post bronchodilator force expiratory volume during first second to first vital capacity ratio less than 0 0.70 that confirms the diagnosis of COPD. Here's the spirometry of normal lung is shown where force vital capacity is up to 5 liter 
and F E Vivian is 4 liter and the ratio of F E Vivian to F E C is 0.8. Whereas in COPT, the forced vital capacity and forced expiratory volume during first second both decrease. But in a ratio that F E V1 to F E C ratio decreases to 0.56 or less than 0.7 classification of square t of air fall limitation in COPT this classification depends upon spirometry while well, based on first bronchodilator FEV1 in patients with FEV1 to FVC less than 0.7 a bronchodilator is given and when FEV1 increases to 80%, it shows mild disease. When it increases from 50% to 79%, then it shows a moderate disease. Whereas in severe disease, the FEV1 increases to 30% to 49%. Whereas in very severe, the forced expiratory volume during first second is less than 30 percent chest structure of chronic bronchitis it normally appears normal or sometimes thickened and increased tongue markings are noted whereas chest x-ray emphysema it shows marked over inflation and a low diaphragm. Intercostal space becomes wider and a horizontal pattern of bricks is shown and a low thin hard shadow. For in the diagram, the pearl shaped lungs are seen and a tubular elongated thin hard shadow can be seen at a flat diaphragm and wide intercostal spaces are appreciated. CT scan has greater sensitivity and specificity for emphysema and for the evaluation of bullous disease. Laboratory examination. It includes full blood count or CBC, which may show us leukocytosis as WBC or TLC count. And sputum examination that shows type of bacteria or other organism causing infection. ABGs or atrial blood gas measurement shows hypoxemia with or without hypercapnia that is partial pressure of oxygen is low with or without partial pressure of carbon dioxide increased. Management Management involves use of bronchodilators Bronchodilators have three major classes beta 2 agonists that are short acting and long acting. Short acting includes salbutamol and terbutaline, whereas long acting includes salmeterol and formoterol. Anticholinergic agents like ephratropium or tyotropium and theophylline. Theophylline is a big bronchodilator but it has some anti inflammatory properties glucocorticoids. They are also bronchodilator. They can be used as inhaled glucocorticoids or systemic glucocorticoids. Inhaled glucocorticoids are used when FPV1 is less than 50% on spirometry, that is in severe cases. Where systemic glucocorticoids should be avoided because of their side effects such as osteoporosis and obesity. Combination therapy is commonly used with the use of long-acting beta-2 agonist and inhaled corticosteroids. Others include antioxidant agents and mucolytic agents. Fast photo is raised for two inhibitors. In patients with very severe COPD, 
phosphodiesterases for inhibitors are used such as profuminest that reduces exasperation treated with oral glucocorticoids other pharmacological treatments include the prevention of infection by vaccination such as influenza vaccination or pneumococcal vaccination however the use of antibiotics other than for treating infection exasperation is currently not indicated oxygen therapy is done oxygen is applied to the patient for more than 15 hours per day long term oxygen therapy improves survival survival exercise sleep and cognitive performance in patient with respiratory failure the therapy goal is to maintain the saturation of oxygen more than 90% and partial pressure of oxygen more than 60 mg mercury other treatments include pulmonary rehabilitation by exercising nutrition improvement surgery for blotchy lung volume reduction surgery and lung transplantation in severe cases smoking cessation has the greater capacity to influence the natural history of COPD pharma pharmacotherapy and nicotine replacement reliably increases the long term smoking abstinence rate so smoking cessation is necessary at every cost it can be done by nicotine patch or other substitutes complications of COPD include pneumothorax for pulmonary exasperation of COPD respiratory failure other comorbidities associated are cardiovascular diseases as COPD causes pulmonary hypertension leading to right sided heart failure by core pulmonary osteoporosis by long term use of glucocorticoids respiratory infarction as the normal lung activity has compromised anxiety and depression diabetes lung cancer and bronchial disease comparison between copd and asthma copd onset is in mid life usually and the symptoms are slowly progressive and there must be a long term history of smoking whereas asthma the onset is early in life or in childhood symptoms vary from day to day symptoms were at night or early morning and it is associated with allergy such as allergic rhinitis or eczema and family history of asthma is there a syndrome called asthma copd overlap syndrome is characterized by persistent air quality limitation with severe several features usually associated with asthma and several features usually associated with copd acos or asthma copd overlap syndrome is therefore ident- identified in clinical practice by features that it shares with both asthma and copd so it has both chronic and allergic effects so this is the end of lecture thank you